Welcome. My name is Scott Olivier. I'm a physicist here at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And today I'm going to be describing some development of technology for retinal imaging using adaptive optics that is able to reveal three-dimensional cellular features within the retina using ophthalmic imaging. So ophthalmic imaging is typically used to assess retinal health. Images of the back of the eye can be taken by optometrists or ophthalmologists with cameras or by simply looking into the back of the eye. And using those images, these doctors can assess the health of the retina, which can be indicative of potential diseases that could ultimately cause uh, vision loss uh, for patients. On the screen, I have an image of what the healthy fundus or back of the eye would look like in a subject, as well as on the right-hand side, an image where there are indicators of disease, in this case, uh, age-related macular degeneration which is the leading cause of blindness in the United States. The visualization of the back of the eye at the cellular level is potentially revolutionary because it enables monitoring of small changes associated with disease progression, with disease treatment, and with the normal function or aging of the eye. On the screen, I'm showing the layers, uh, both a schematic diagram as well as a uh, microscope picture of tissue at the back of the eye. And these show the layers that are typically involved in disease progression at the top with uh, ganglion cells that are involved in the disease glaucoma, another one of the leading causes of blindness in the US. And uh, towards the bottom, the photoreceptor cell layer, which is damaged in age-related macular degeneration, as well as uh, another important disease, diabetic ret retinopathy. Starting about 15 or 20 years ago, uh, a technique called optical coherence tomography started to be developed for retinal imaging. This technique, a schematic of which is shown uh, on the left of this uh, chart, uses light shown into the eye and also into a sample arm and then combined to create uh, a reflected image uh, shown at the right hand side of the chart for a normal eye. Uh, where you can see the individual layers of the cells that are important in the function of the eye. Once again, ganglion cells towards the top of the eye and retinal uh, photoreceptor cells uh, towards the bottom of the eye. One of the important um, advantages of this optical coherence tomography technique is the axial resolution or the resolution in the vertical uh, plane of the eye can be as small as two to three microns, which is smaller than most of the cells. And so the cell layers are resolved. However, the lateral resolution is limited by the aberrations in the optics of the eye to larger than about 15 microns, which is larger than most of the cells in the retina, and therefore individual cells can't be resolved in this imagery, uh, although the layers uh, can be resolved. About the same time, 15 to 20 years ago in the 1990s, a technique called adaptive optics started to be used to produce high resolution imagery in the retina. This technique, which was originally developed for astronomical imaging, uses a mirror that can be shaped to cancel the aberrations in an optical system. In this case, these aberrations are caused by the optics of the eye, the cornea and the lens, which are um, 
not perfect optics and therefore create aberrations which blur images of microscopes looking into the eye. Uh, in this technique, if you bounce the light that is exiting from the eye off of the deformal mirror, which has been adjusted to remove the aberrations caused by the eye's optics, then high resolution images can be produced. In the early uses of adaptive optics for retinal imaging, again 15 years ago or so, these images were um, what's called on fos or in the lateral plane of the eye. Um, and so there's no depth resolution as you get with optical coherence tomography. However, the cells, in this case of the picture shown on the chart, the tips of photoreceptor cells are uh, able to be imaged and resolved individually because the lateral resolution has now been reduced to as small as two to three microns. The advance that we've made here is in the combination of adaptive optics with optical coherence tomography. This enables the full three-dimensional imaging of cells within the retina. And so there's a schematic shown on this chart for how we combine the beams that include both a sample arm for optical coherence tomography as well as the deformable mirror for the adaptive optics and enable the uh, production of imagery that's in some sense the best of both worlds. It has both high axial and lateral resolution. And so there's an image on the right of this chart that shows a three-dimensional cellular matrix from the back of a normal eye showing towards the bottom of this uh, three-dimensional image the layers uh, for the photoreceptors, which are the brightest layers in this image. And uh, then again towards the top of the image would be the ganglion cell layer. A uh, further uh, invention here has been the combination of scanning laser ophthalmoscopy with adaptive optics, optical coherence tomography. This enables the reduction of artifacts due to eye motion by taking high resolution, essentially motion video or imagery at video rates of the back of the eye using a fast scanning laser ophthalmoscope combined with the adaptive optics, optical coherence tomography imagery which is taken at slower rates, typically several seconds, to create a three-dimensional image. These uh, combined techniques can be used with the fast motion video to capture any eye motions, and those can be then post-processed to stabilize what would be blurring effects in the slower uh, process of capturing the optical coherence tomography image. So there have been several clinical systems built, uh, in particular two that we have built with our clinical partners, uh, both at the University of California, Davis, and at Indiana University. The system at UC Davis includes the scanning laser ophthalmoscopy that is important for mitigating uh, motions of the eye. And in addition to uh, these uh, clinical systems. There's been substantial work on image processing software at both of these clinical sites. In addition, uh, since these systems have been running over the past several years, there have been several hundred subjects that have been imaged on these systems. And uh, so far, we haven't been able to identify any substantial technical barriers to clinical use. We're able to move patients into these systems uh, quickly and uh, image their eyes and, and move them out in a way that's appropriate for, for clinical utility. Uh, in addition, uh, although these prototype systems are fairly large and have been built in, uh, in research uh, departments at these uh, university medical centers, um, we have demonstrated that compact designs of these systems would be feasible um, that would be appropriate for a normal uh, clinical office. So in summary, um, adaptive optics, optical coherence tomography does provide a unique capability for retinal imaging. In particular, this allows the in vivo visualization 
of 3D cellular features. And this is done by providing both high axial and lateral resolution, which only this technique uh, offers. This, uh, in turn, enables monitoring of changes associated with disease progression, as well as disease treatment, as well as research into the normal function or aging of eyes. This technique can be used by ophthalmologists for earlier disease diagnosis, as well as to monitor uh, progress of clinical disease treatments, including the specific case of clinical trials where it's quite important to quickly assess whether new therapies are having the intended effect on cells in the retina that may be damaged by disease. I'd like to thank you for uh, your attention to this presentation, and if there are further questions, the contact information for Hanaro Mempen is on the screen at our industrial partnership office. Once again, thanks very much.